Welcome to the new best build for Cyberpunk 2077 in patch 1.6 dealing over 900% critical damage at 100% crit chance every time whenever you want it, whenever you need it. This build will deal over 80,000 damage with your melee weapons and you will finally become the strongest and deadliest mercenary in Night City once again. You will also deal over 22,000 damage with your rifles and even over 40,000 damage with your handguns. You will literally be shredding nuts and bolts out of the chrome of your enemies. That is mainly because we are going level 65 on Merciless, turning every single shot into a critical hit with over 100% crit chance during Santa Vista and 302% critical damage. And when you combine that with the Zatori which has 603%, you will get a nice and juicy 905% critical damage for all your melee attacks. But that's not the only thing because when you go cool 20, you will literally double your damage as long as you are out of combat. So you will actually deal 1800 percent critical damage instead of only 900 percent and for any other weapon it will still be 300 percent multiplied with 4.5 as long as you wear a silencer because the silencer will also add to your cool level giving you a 4.5 times multiplier and in fact dealing 1300 percent for any other weapon that is like the whole patch 1.5 nerf has never happened we are now finally back to patch 1.3 damage level in order to get all these damage modifiers you should play with a silenced weapon and with optical camo. Make sure that you don't enter combat at all costs. A really fine weapon to use for this is the Morun Lab. Whenever you enter a combat situation just kneel down, activate Sandvistan to maximize your crit chance and kill your first target. After that you will enter the Merciless Chain, after which it will be stupidly easy to get over 20,000 damage on every headshot you make. And with the silencer they will never know where you're actually standing or shooting from. The Zatori was one of the most obvious weapons to use with this build just because of its high critical damage, not necessarily because you stay out of combat with it. Of course our usual best weapons candidates such as Death and Texas are just getting better with this crazy build as well. We will deal over 20,000 damage for every single bullet. That means 40,000 damage with the Death and Texas in a single shot, even a Cyber Psycho would just bite the grass with it. And if that's not enough you can also try out the Crash. That revolver will deal up to 60,000 damage with a single bullet perfectly placed in your enemy's head. Basically any handgun in this build will be totally overpowered because they give you the additional 240% headshot multiplier and in terms of the dying knight you will even get 360% and then it doesn't even matter if you are staying out of combat or not. This gun will simply shred everything no matter if you are in combat or out of combat. If you need more help for Cyberpunk in doing all these tricks and glitches and builds, you can of course also join our Discord server, we have over 1500 players and you can of course also become a YouTube or Patreon member to support this channel, that would be greatly appreciated as well. The weapons I finally decided to go for in this build are of course the Zatori because of the 600% critical damage that give me the 900% crit damage build which is just insanely cool. Inside the Zatori we will just put 3 cold shoulder mods because it doesn't make sense to increase your crit damage any further. Your crit damage is already sky high so it would have a very minuscule effect to increase the crit damage further so we rather go only for shoulder to increase our DPS. The Moron Lab on the other hand is a really fine rifle because it is one of the slowest shooting ones and the slower a rifle shoots the more damage you get for a single bullet which suits perfectly for the purpose that we want to turn this weapon into a silent single shooting sniper rifle. We equip a clear view optics and a blue silencer and of course 4 crunch mods in it. Last but not least I wanted to go for the crash because I wanted to do something different and not always use the death in Texas. The crash is a really fine version of the overture revolver with increased accuracy. We equip a Kanotsugo optics and also a blue silencer of course. You can of course also use any other handgun, also the Death in Texas and also the Dying Knight. Simply equip an optics that suits you well and also don't forget to add the silencer on it. The armor items are really not that special except for the eyewear where I put a Fortuna mod inside or the other armor items are just using armadillo mods. The cyberware is a bit different because this time we don't have a high body level but we'll make the best out of it. For our frontal cortex we go for heal on kill, the mechatronic core, the third slot will be empty as usual and for the Kiroshi optics we go for 3 trajectory analyzers. All those Kiroshi mods are stacking since version 1.5 so we don't need to discuss about that. 
The best item you can equip with 8 body is probably the micro generator. Now here it is really evident what you actually lose when not going body. You are losing the legendary blood vessels, bioconductor, second heart and even the better skeleton. All this is so powerful that it is really really a trade off here for the damage to not go body. But it is worth it. With 20 cool you can actually use the pain editor which removes 10% of all incoming damage and the metabolic editor which not only protects you from poison but also regenerates health when you are poisoned. Of course we will also go for Kurensikov as usual and also for the nano relays to increase our Sandevistan time because this build will finally be a Sandevistan build. The armor items are straightforward, we go for the 300 additional armor, the legendary optical camo and we can now use the heat converter instead of just the fireproof coating which will also increase your damage whenever you are on fire. For the cyberware I will use the legendary quine Sandivistan Mark IV which you can get from fingers in the cherry blossom market. I will equip it with two legendary heat sinks and one Sandivistan prototype ship which increases the crit chance by another 5%. That gives me a total crit chance increase of 20% and also gives me a 7 second cooldown. We can't get the cooldown so far down anyway because we can't use the legendary bioconductor in this build but having a good crit chance boost is really important for your first hit because you have to make sure to kill your enemy in your first hit with a single bullet as well and then merciless will kick in with all the crit chance and crit damage and you don't have to worry about it anymore. But the first hit is very important and you should really use Sandvistan when you do your first kill. The rest of the cyberware is pretty much standard, we can only use the green skeleton however that still gives us 30% additional health which is really a lot. We go for the micro rotors for additional 45% attack speed for our blade. We go for the gorilla arms to increase our body level for any potential body checks. Of course you can also use the monowire instead if you want to and then don't forget to use the tendons for your double jump. The skills are very different from my previous builds, this time we will go for 20 cool, 20 tech and 20 reflex and we will dump all the remaining points into body. We will also start with cool because that is the most important one in this build. You should go for assassin which gives you 15% damage to all human enemies, silent and deadly will give you 25% damage whenever you equip a silencer which will basically completely count as a negative effect of wearing a silencer and then you should also go for strike from the shadows which increases your crit chance by 7% whenever you crouch. And this is really cool because you can use it for your first shot when you are not already into merciless. We will go for a total of 65 points into Merciless which is basically all the remaining points you have for your build. At that point when you exceed over 55 or 60 points you will have 100% crit chance with any weapon as long as Cold Blood is active. So the only goal actually here in this build is to remain Cold Blood active as long as possible. And to reach that of course we have to go for 3 points on Cold Blood. Removing every cold blood stack one by one, increasing the duration by 50% and adding two additional stacks of cold blood. That will ensure that you will have cold blood active for over a minute. Any of the other perks in this tree can be completely ignored, they are not necessary. You only want to have this active as long as possible, everything else is trash. In the body tree we will only go for what is absolutely necessary which is the pack mule and the regeneration. If your main weapon is a Zatori then you can also opt to go for steel and chrome but that would require you to get body 9 or even 10. You can reduce your tech skill by 2 levels and increase body and get this perk but I wanted to increase my damage for my weapons instead so I only went for body 8. So we will use our precious points into assault where we go for all the damage perks. Increase critical damage, the stoic perk which increases 35% damage while standing still, general damage increase, more damage when aimed down side, damage on enemies whose health is above 50% and damage on enemies who are farther away. Basically everything that gives you damage and we don't go for anything else. This build is really crazily optimized, we will do the same for pistols. Get crit chance for your pistols, brain power to increase crit chance after every successful headshot, increase the headshot multiplier, increase the damage for enemies farther away and then increase the crit chance for a fully modded weapon. For blades we will also only go for the damage perks, increase damage for heavy attacks, we will go for the increased attack speed, increase damage on enemies who have 100% health, 50% damage after dodging and the death bolt which gives you 20% health for every enemy you kill which also stacks with your heal on kill which totals in 30% health on every kill. And if you still have points you can of course also invest a point in the dragon strike to get 40% additional critical damage. That leaves you with enough points to barely get all the needed tech perks, true craftsman, grease monkey, edge runner artisan to craft your legendary weapons and then I definitely go for cutting edge. 
A lot of people always ask me why do you go for tech 20, it's not needed. But cutting edge gives you 5% damage for all your weapons. And that is basically the same as if you get another crunch mod slot for your weapons. I know crunch mods gives you 7% on legendary and you get only 5% here. But it is basically the same as if you get another crunch mod. Also don't forget to increase your armor and field technician to increase your damage for all your crafted weapons. I hope you really like this build, you will have the fun of your lifetime playing this. We are back to patch 1.3 damage. Please don't forget to subscribe, leave me a like and see you next time.